Yeah, hello, this is Bane Bane, Mail. Just um, read all the comments from from my phone and from Fish's comments. Thanks all very, very much for, for sticking up for Fish. There were three or four comments that are bad, but obviously you're going to expect that after a thousand comments, yeah? So thanks very much. Uh, Fish feels a lot better now. Well, he knew, he knew he had a fucking grass, mate. He had a grass, so, you know, but when you've got people like that giving you grief and saying things they shouldn't be saying, it's a bit disrespectful, yeah? Mm -hmm. And Fish has got a nice way of saying things, and I love him for that, yeah? Anyway, um, this is 19... What, I think 98, 90, I can't remember now. I'm in the scrubs. I'm on the ones. I'm on remand. And I'm in, in this cell with a guy called Ricky, yeah? I'm up for a serious charge. Is that, that's why I'm up for a serious charge. And uh, anyway, Ricky, really nice, really nice guy. In for drugs. Uh, telling me lots of things. I thought, fuck, man, this is like, this is a bit, a bit of me, right? Anyway. We was with a guy called Nobby as well. This Nobby was a couple of cells from us. We got all got a job in there cleaning, yeah? Cleaning the ones, yeah? Fucking loved the job. Anyway, my, my mate uh, Nobby, fucking idiot really, got involved, got involved with something, got the sack, went up the stairs on the freeze. Loads of drugs in it, already shot at the night time. This is what drugs can fucking do to you, mate. Right, this geezer was well fucking together. Well geezer, mate. Muscular. Nice fella, always training, press up fucking in the gym, look the bollocks, yeah. Couple of kids, mate. One night I was in the cell, I could hear him screaming out, crying, crying like a baby. Please, please swing me a line, swing me a line, send me something up, yeah. Please, I need it that bad. Brown, he was on the fucking brown, mate. I couldn't believe it, mate. Do you know what I mean? Fucking chasing that fucking shit, mate. He was finished. He was finished, mate. Like, I see him, what, a year, two years later? Just coming back from a rehab. Fucking hell. A rehab. He looked, mate, his face looked like chalk. Like all fucking white. He cut over, mate. He looked fucked. And the whole of his body had gone. His body had fucking just gone, mate. You know what I mean? And it, it's a fucking shock, you know. It's a shock to see what every fucking things can do to you. Listen, I was on crack, right, for eight years. Eight years. Lost so much for being on crack. Lost everything, really. Got the IPP because I was on fucking crack. Too much arsehole. I've always had arsehole, but you've got too much arsehole, yeah? Not thinking of the consequences of anything. Just going in and fucking doing it. You imagine, right? I'm going in the fucking, I'm going in the mobile farm warehouse, dressed as SO19. I've got all the SO19 fucking gear. I've got the mask on, everything, everything. All the paddy fucking this and gear. And I'm three of my mates was all dressed up as fucking custom exercise with the helmet, with the hats and all the stuff, yeah? Got all this stuff. Don't ask me where from. Got all this stuff. I just walked in there. As bold as boss. Because I've been on the pipe in the back of the motor for about an hour. Walked in there. And my mates walked upstairs to get the fucking hard drive. What they come down with? Computers and fucking washes and rings and it. Took the upstairs. Got them all tied up, yeah? The geezer's downstairs. Mate, it's only the crack that fucked me up. You know what I mean? You go into this big warehouse, they've got massive containers in there that they're putting the phones into right after they fuck about them. We goes in there saying they're fucking about the phones, they're always saying, yeah, we've got a cable tried people, cable tried them all up. Mate, there's this big Irish guy, Irish guy that runs the floor, he's cable tried. When we want to get all the people into this big van, there's a big van in there, yeah, we want to put them in there, he goes, that ain't old Bill, they're fucking away, he yeah, ain't old Bill, they're fucking cut the robbers, mate, he broke his cable toys, snapped them, have you ever tried snapping fucking hell, fucking hell, he 
snapped his cable twice. He come running towards me. It's only because I was on this crap, mate, that I was like fucking like mad, mad, mate. I whacked him with his fucking SO19 gloves on. These SO19 gloves are all leaded up, yeah. Leaded up the top, leaded up the front, leaded up, mate. I hit him on the jaw so hard that the, the, the his jawbone went straight through the side of his jaw, outside. Went straight through, bump, out, come outside the jaw. As I went with the right hand and my left hook, the fucking other one. You can imagine, can't you? What a stake. Danny gets on the floor, knocks Mark out, turn him over, cable tied him up again, look, get all the fucking phones, fuck off, hit about 20 police cars. <laughs> I'm driving the big boat, right? It's like, you know what I mean? It's why? Drugs, mate. But mind you, but it, I can't complain because we got a lot out of it. We got a lot out of it, and I got a lot of fucking bird out of it. I got an IPP, an IPP. Do you know what I mean? If I'd have hit him, I'd have more likely got a fucking six stretch, five stretch. But I hit him, and the funniest thing was they offered me a deal to plead guilty and get a nine-year sentence. I went fuck that. Plead guilty? Why should I play? I've got Marsh on it. Anyway, dummy facial mapping. I ain't. Fucked. I'm fucked. I'm fucked. I'm facial mapping the way you walk and this, that, and the other. I'm fuck me. Fuck me up, yeah? So I refuse to do get annoying. I'm in this Connor Bear, yeah? I'm in this Connor Bear drugs unit looking after people who are taking drugs. You wouldn't believe the state of people in this Connor Bear. They're drinking fucking um, uh, methadone and bits and pieces like that, taking it in, not swallowing it, making it out there, I swallowing it, ain't swallowing it, and they're spitting it back in the cup. And they're selling it. They're selling it to other people in the corner bear. How can you do that? Spit it back in the cup and sell it to people in the corner bear. I couldn't believe it, mate. All taking all sorts of drugs. You go in their cells... We had, that, that was our job, going there, so I was cleaning people up, and I went, mate, spewing up sick everywhere. There's people in there you wouldn't even believe if I told you their names, you go, fuck off. No way. Mate, proper people in there, on the burn, on the smack, on, well, smack is burn, on the fucking, on the on the crack, fucking, no one on, 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 on the other thing, no one on green and all that, and fucking black and all that, nothing, no one on that, always on the brown and on the crack, and on the coke, but not so much coke, it's, it's the crack, isn't it? And you can't believe it, mate, you're fucking, it just knocks your pipe out. But the only thing they do with them people, they f look after them, they give them clean clothes, clean bedding, that's all we do, go in there fucking clean it all up, yeah? And when they come on the hot plate, they got fucking as much food as they like, they can eat as much as they like, and it seems to be different food to what they get on the wing. I don't know what more vitamins or what it must be because they need it because they're like that. And that's where I met Jefferson King. Jefferson King was in there. And he was like, not as bad as he is now. He was quite sensible, right? Quite, but Jeff is one of them people that knows everything. He's quite intelligent, very, very clever, knows everything, yeah? But he's, don't forget, he's already worked for me on the fucking door of a club. You know, so I remember him when he was like big, like 23 fucking stone. You know what I mean? Six foot fucking four wide as a fucking door. You know, so like, I remember all that, you know what I mean? And to see him like that, he fucking knocks your pipe out, mate. You know, and he's back in the gym and he's training and he's getting a bit, a bit of shape back. But the thing is, what he is, he's one of them people buying that crap what people spit back in their fucking cups and he's buying that Jeff he can't leave drugs alone he can't leave drugs alone look at the state of the poor cunt you know what I mean fucks his life up completely this geezer was a proper man shadow from the gladiators the fucking everybody knows what he's like big as an house big as an house shadow from the gladiators <laughs> fucking hell when he comes to my club, or well, not my club, my mate John's club and Will's club, and when he comes to the club, I went, 
oh my god, this geezer's on a dory, and he's like ex ex uh, fucking military, like proper military. You know what I mean? He was in the Marines, so he's an American Marines. You expect him to be a bit lively, you know? But he worked in a lot of clubs in the city, proper clubs in the city, not fucking like his shit clubs. I think he, he, he worked with fuck. He works in uh, string fillers, bootleggers. For Denzies, he's worked in quite some good clubs, mate. But all them clubs, there's not a lot of trouble in them, really. Everybody respects everybody, and it's not... The, 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 the clubs are the fucking... Is the aggro. What's the aggro clubs? I don't really know any aggro clubs, really. Not now, or not in, in the city, as such. But where I was, in Acton, Acton West, like West Free, fucking Acton's fucking murder, mate. It's fucking murder. Everybody in this fight. It's all about drugs, and I've gone on and on about something else, but it's not about drugs. And even when I worked in the club in Acton, yeah, Central Park, and when Jeff worked with me, yeah, there was drugs flying around there, like, like it was going out of fashion. I didn't even fucking want to stop it, you know what I mean? It was just people enjoying their life. Everyone's taking his ease, acid tabs, and fuck does, what have you. Everybody's enjoying themselves, dancing like lunatics, but. Is it is like everything, can it? You get little bits of trouble in there. I was okay sorting out myself, no problem. I had a lot of respect in there. People knew if they didn't do what I wanted them to do, and it was a row kicked off, and I had to know all the people. I'd be around their house in the morning, yeah. I'd be around their house in the morning sorting them out, or in the afternoon. Don't worry about that. We would have fucking rows. So I would have a row with them. The worst guy, not the worst guy, but the guy in there. That before he got stabbed up, Gary, Gary Francis, got stabbed 26 times, you know. Fucking lucky to be alive, mate. And punches all his lungs and everything, you know what I mean? But out of everybody that went in there, I think Gary Francis then was a fucker, yeah. He didn't give a fuck. He, was, he would stab you up bad, mate. And I was also searching when he came in, yeah. You know what I mean? And you'd always have something on him. But he was a dangerous person, mate. He didn't give a fuck. And he was my pal. He was my pal, Gary. You know, but later on, he had a big gym, Gary. Fuck me, I was a fool. I could have come in with a gym, I didn't. He had a big gym in Acton, yeah, called G's Gym. Let me tell you something, this gym was the bollocks, mate. Proper powerlifting gym. Big, big people there. He had all people from come from Chelsea. Ch Chelsea uh, Football Club, like big bouncers in there. Big John. Fucking massive gig, John. Massive. And there was lots of in there, lots of big, heavy people in there. A lot of black guys in there, big guys, you know what I mean? And I was going to see Gary. Gary was always fuck about Gary. He drives you mad. You can't get no conversation out of him. All he wants to do is stab you, run around fucking stabbing you like a fucking lunatic. You're running from him all the time. Listen, I will never fight Gary. Gary was my mate, my pal. You know what I mean? We was really, really good friends. And we still are very good friends. And he's a good dad. All his kids have fucking got nice places. Gary's place is beautiful, you know what I mean? His wife, she's really, really nice, you know? And she always look, makes you welcome if you go there. She always makes you welcome. Look at your early love. Always makes you welcome. Gary's good, you know what I mean? He's back garden. He loves his back garden, mate. Fair play to him. When I lived in Kingston, my back garden was not the bollocks. Gary came in and bought it all. Bought all my back garden. But... I don't. I think his back garden's a little bit better than mine. Yeah, he hides his money under the, under the pond. But you know, that, but I thought I'd tell you that. That's where his money is under the pond. It's about twenty foot deep, so you've got to dive in with a diving fucking so you get it. Yeah, it goes. He's got it down there. I know he's got his money hid in there because he's got a couple of diving suits in his fucking house. I fancy puts them on, dives in, buries his fucking money. Anyway, that's a. I'm grasping what up, and I go. Anyway, <laughs> no, no. He's a nice geezer to go. He's a dangerous cunt. And when I was down the club, obviously there was a lot of drugs down there. A lot of drugs. Gary wasn't in all his drug bollocks. You know what I mean? He didn't get involved in it. He didn't like people taking it. You see Gary go into one. He'd fucking cut a few people, slap a few people on the head. I like Gary for that. Yeah, it was some nice people got in that club though. And from there, from there, right, I was like, I'm, I'm talking about, I'm back in fucking prison now, yeah? About the fucking drugs and this, that and the other and I'm on about fucking Jefferson King when he used to work for me. Anyway, Jefferson King is in his corner there with me, yeah? And he's taking his fucking shit, uh, uh, 
fucking long, uh, not long gap draw. Oh, but yeah, he's taking long gap draw as well, but he's taking all the other stuff, methadones and all that shit, yeah? Mate, why, Jeff? What the fuck was he doing? Do you know what I mean? Big geezers like that. He got caught, didn't he? On Gladiators, fucking sniffing cocaine. Sniffing cocaine. Is he mad? Getting like four or five grand a week wages, and there you are, sniffing cocaine and want to lose your fucking job. How sensible is that, eh? Couldn't wait until he got outside. He had to do it in the club. Anyway, I like to tell Jeff, and we know, we, me, and my, me and my pals just go to the gym in the morning from the corner bed. He'd be in there, yeah? He'd come. Mate, he had a proper, proper way of training. And he's one of the geezers, because his body's got memories, because he was a big, fucking powerful, big, fucking man, he's always muscles, he's got memory to all parts of his body. When he started training, it all blew up again. His fucking shoulders were getting massive, really wide, do you know what I mean? And he looked the bollocks, mate. He looked the bollocks, but... He was still in the corner bed taking fucking drugs. He was eating a lot in the corner bed, that's why. But he was taking drugs still. And I thought he really got out of learning his lesson. But he didn't learn his fucking lesson. Do you know, it's a shame. It's a fucking shame. You know, look at me. Look at me. Going on a bit further. Look at me. Fucking, what's his name? Fucking, uh, oh, anyway, forget about that for the minute. You've got this... Uh, the drugs was in there, it's easy to get hold of, you know what I mean? Every morning, Pitt was getting this, getting that, tablets, this, that, and the other, taking them, enjoying their fucking life, out of their nut, being sick, shitting everywhere. I'd be cleaning up my powers, you know what I mean? And that's what it was That's what it was about. Listen, I'm trying to remember the guy's name, that um, Pete Doherty. Oh, what? I've already said that on podcasts before, yeah? But come on. What goes up when you go up to the first night centre? And you keep hearing about this guy they called Pete Dockett. I didn't know who the fuck he was. People say to me, oh, he's a famous singer. Who the fuck? I don't know who he was. And got up there, and there he is. He looked, to me, he looked like a bag of fucking shit. He looked filthy dirty all the time. He wasn't a silk clean guy, you know what I mean? He looked dirty. He looked as if his eyes, or maybe it was smoking a fucking gear, I don't know, but he was all the dirty. And when we went up there, first night, this, this first night set, to see people as they're coming in, he was up there a bit of time because they didn't want to put him on the wing, you know. But he was buying drugs off of people, and they were bullying him, yeah. They were bullying him. And I was going in and say, listen, you fucking leave him alone. Do you know what I mean? Don't be fucking bullying him for drugs, you cunt. Don't be bullying him for his money. Leave him alone, you fucking wankers, yeah. And so I got him in the corner bear. And oh, then I was fucking selling, <laughs> getting drugs, giving him drugs, getting him to give me the money. It's what I do. Not them fucking cunts to do. It's what I want to do. Not him. Not them up there. And I'm looking after him. I'm supplying him his fucking bits and pieces. And he's really into it, mate. He's fucking back in the brown. He's up there chasing the fucking shit and smoking this and doing this. And, you know, like... Well, it, well, who, who, was the, who was the bird that he, um, Kate Moss, yeah? Oh, what? Do you know what I mean? Look at Kate Moss. She's fucking beautiful. And yet she's with him. Pete Doherty. Why? He must have had a big cock down at his kneecaps or something like that. You know what I mean? You know, but um, money-wise, I don't know. She was a top model getting 10 grand a time, so whatever. But when the papers, when we got all of my mate got, I got on a visit, my mate was telling me about it, and I used to phone him up regular on the phone, because everyone's got a phone in there. Well, not everybody, most people. And I was just be talking to my pal, saying, they said, look, mate, get some fucking paperwork from fucking Pete Doherty. You know, letters, but get Kate Moss's letters. If you get Kate Moss's letters or cards, we're going to get a lot of money. What I do, I've done this, nicked it, give it to him, mate. What does he do? Puts it in the fucking paper. Gets it in the sun. <laughs> There's me in the morning, crash, door crashes in, nicked. I've got to go down the block. No matter what, I'm going to have to go down the block. I know that, yeah? I know that I'm going to get shipped out. I know that I'm going to go to another prison. And they're saying, now they want to get rid of me quick because of the aggro. And I do go quick. Yeah, I go to the Mount, yeah? The Mount was a good prison. You know, there wasn't much drugs there in the Mount. There wasn't much drugs. A lot of people were very, very fit in the, in the Mount. A lot of education in the Mount, you know what I mean? Anyway... I think I'll end now because I shouldn't have said too much. This is about fish. I'm um, saying so again, thank you very much for everybody that stuck by fish. 100% to you, mate. All you up. Big respect, yeah? 
it can't happen again, it can't happen again, yeah? It mustn't never happen again, all this grass and shit and fucking all that, yeah? We're doing podcasts, we're trying to be fucking nice as we can to people. All we want to do, really, we're telling our stories because at the end of it, we've got nothing, yeah? And we want kids on drugs to realise that it ain't worth it, mate. Because at the end of the day, all you're doing is getting plenty of fucking prison, prison sentences, ruining your life, ruining your wife's life, ruining your mum's life, ruining your girlfriend's life, perhaps never seeing your mum again, perhaps never seeing your dad again, perhaps losing your brothers and sisters like I have. I've lost my mum, I've lost my dad, I've lost it all, yeah? What's it all down to? It ain't down to drugs. The last one was. But it's all about robberies, armed robberies, me being big time Charlie Potatoes, getting fucking this, mate, getting nicked. Oh, come on. Obviously, so, none of us want to get fucking nicked. We all want to be the number one. You know what I mean? I was working with a massive big company, yeah, but that's going to be later on in my book and later on in big podcasts I'm doing. It's already done. I've already said a lot about that, you know what I mean? But I've worked with some proper people before when I come out and nick. Meeting some proper, proper people. Works in so many clubs. Has so many fucking fights with people. Big, proper people. You know what I mean? And uh, I've never lost a fight yet. Maybe. Do you know what? Do you know what I was going to say the other day? You know Daley Thompson, who won the gold medal, didn't he win the gold medal or something in, in, in the catapling? Was it? Well, I, I, I was doing street fighting, prize fighting. I was having two, three fights a fucking week sometimes. And this particular time, listen, not making no excuses, someone gave me a thing called a black bomber. A, a fucking pill that was speed. You put it in your fucking thing, boom, bomb dropped down again. Anyway, Jimmy Jimmy Tibbet didn't even know that I was on t- taking this fucking thing. Went down to Tottenham, had a fight down there. Big fucking show. Daley Thompson was with a guy called Dave Strong. If you're there, Dave, you give me a good idea, mate. Well done. With a guy called Dave Strong. As I said, I ain't lost many fights. You know, I've had I've 42, you know, 38 one, lost two, drew two, yeah. But this Dave Strong, let me tell you that, this Dave Strong, fucking, what, six foot four, six foot five, maybe even taller. A Daley Thompson in his corner. When I see Daley Thompson, I thought, this is a fucking joke, isn't it? Got in the ring, I just. Went like a fucking, like an ice pole. Didn't even move, mate. Stiff as fuck. This Dave, this, uh, uh, he's Dave Strong. Eight rounds, mate. He smashed me to pieces. So much so, all right, I hit him in the last round, all right, just threw a punch, mate, and he hit him in the fucking ribs, and he hit the floor, yeah? And it's only the bell that saved his arsehole, yeah? But that was the only punch that I really hit him hard, you know what I mean? That's the only punch that I really hit him. He smashed me to pieces, mate. He won the fight. He, easy, he won the fight. Dave Strong. Well done, David, you. I had blood, right? When I got home, I had blood coming out my ears, and blood coming out my eyes and my nose, and all blood in my mouth, but he cut all my mouth to pieces, yeah? Fucking hell, mate. That's one fight I'll always remember. This geezer Dave Strong, he smashed me to pieces, mate. Whether or not it's drugs again. Drugs again, taking that, blood, that bomber. Whether or not I can blame that, which I want to blame that if I get a good idea, you know what I mean? He bashed me up, mate. He smashed me to pieces. I know I'm a man for saying it. I've been meaning to say that for ages. But just on the tip of my tongue, because I'm a little bit punchy, the tip of my tongue, Dave Strong's name come out, and Dave, Tom- Dave Thompson. Fucking, and what a proper man that man is, Daddy Thompson. Fucking Ada. What a powerhouse he is. What a fucking athlete. Come on. Anyway, I just thought I'd say that before I say sign off. Because once I start saying little bits and pieces. Anyway, do me a favour, mums and dads, or mums, or dads are just with their kids, mums with their kids. Look after your kids, yeah? Make sure your kids, when they go to school, they're safe, yeah? Make sure they don't go to school by themselves. Make sure there were some other kids and they go to school. I was sexually abused as a kid, right? 
Let me tell you a little story here. Yeah? It's going to have to be coming out anyway. I told you about I was sexually abused, yeah? But this be his dirty old cunt, yeah? When we was going to school. I was going to school one of the yeah? There was this fucking geezer on a wheelchair. And one day, this guy fucking... He got hold of me, yeah? He got hold of me, and he's fucking talking to me, this, that, and the other. And... One minute. Oh, anyway, listen, I'm going to sign off now because this phone's gone dodgy. No, I ain't. It's all right now, yeah? Kept talking to me, right? One day, he fucking started touching me up, yeah? And I thought, fucking hell. You know what I mean? What's he up to, yeah? Don't forget, by that time, I'd already been sexually abused by this guy. And I'd been sexually abused in the home, yeah? In the fucking home. So this was something that was fucking new, the same to me, but do you know what I mean? And he kept fucking touching me up. And I fucking, and I was, God, what I was going fucking a bit thing. I didn't know what to do. So when I went back to school, I called a few more fucking mates about this mate. I was only 10, 11. We fucking bashed him up. Right? We took him in his little house, mate. He took us all in his little house. I think we was going to have, have a game in front of us. We battered him. Don't forget he's in the wheelchair, this old cunt. We smashed him to pieces. We nicked all his money. We nicked all his fucking jewellery. Funny kids. But there he is, touching you up. Well, who does he think he fucking is? Now listen, this is what I'm telling you. Make sure your kids, when you take them to school, they don't go to school by themselves. When they're coming out of school, please try to get them picked up by whoever, but not fucking obviously so by whoever, by someone you know who's got kids, you know, get them looked after, mate, and make sure when it, 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 you, you're around them, mate, and make sure when they look a bit fucking funny and start fighting too much, you can talk to them, yeah, all right, anyway, take care, love you all, and thanks very much for listening to my podcast, I know I've gone on a bit about other things, but this is what I do, yeah, take care, and don't forget to subscribe me, please, and like me, and subscribe me, and Keep viewing my channels, yeah? Love you to death. Bye-bye.